Welcome back to another episode guys, we are kicking it off where we left off last time. I'm still in the Marlborough Sounds and this is day two of the Stonedom SummerSlam competition. We decided to steam out early in the morning to the location where we left off last time. We wanted that clearer water again and since there was fish there last time there's a pretty good hope that there's something kicking about as well. Me and Kat end up in the same spot and we're diving this nice little weed edge with a good rocky outcrop and I'm getting straight down to the edge of it here. You can also see Kat coming down for a look and in the distance there is some schools of bait fish which look like koru or something like that and I have my gun ready because usually if there's those sorts of bait fish about they could be a kingy that cruises in. I stay down a bit longer, decided to do a few grunts and that school of bait fish still is just moving about. Blue cod coming in, unfortunately no kingfish, I've not even seen any turkey or any mochi yet, but there's still time. So I head back down for another dive and again I'm right on the weed edge just at the bottom of the rocks and there's still bait fish everywhere until I see it looks to be a big old mochi in the distance. So I start aiming up but those bait fish just keep making me think there's a big old kingy about to swim past so I hold off. But it turns out Kat was down there as well and she was eyeing up the mochi but decided not to pull the trigger because I was eyeing it up as well. So she gave me a bit of a telling off when I got to the surface because I didn't pull the trigger. But I thought there might be a kingy and I wasn't sure if it was big enough. What? Why did you get hit first? The working? Yeah. I don't know if it was big enough. Oh, it's fucking better! <laughs> oh, I was shot another way. Why didn't you choose it? You were trying to get stuck. So? You shouldn't. Like, you snooze and lose, that's the rules. You should have just shot it. I might go down and see if I can find it. I would have got it off. And it didn't take Kat long to get back down there and find a Moki as well. I came across her as she was just pulling it up from the bottom, so a successful dive. And you could just see the pure joy in her face as she got onto the surface. Whilst Kat was sorting her Moki out, I decided to take a dive close to where she went down. And it was a lot better, there was some kelp everywhere. And what did I get when I hit the bottom? Some nice fish cruising about. There's three Moki, they came pretty much all the way up to me. And then it was just a decision making time. Which one do I go for? I eventually picked the biggest one that cruised right on in and I took my time and I got a perfect shot off. Straight through the lateral line, the fish flaked over. This means I'm not having to faff about with it on surface and it made it so easy to bring it up. Now I know that these aren't on the species list for the comp but I'm not going to put my nose up at shooting them as I think they taste great. It means we've got some dinner to take back to Wellington with us and I'm not in this location very often at all. So I'm over the moon with this fish. But that being said, we are in a competition so we might as well give it all we've got. I ended up chasing or wanted to chase some different species so I headed out to a sandy environment in the search for some trevelli or just something swimming along the weed line or out in the open. I ended up having this nice big rock behind me across this whole sandy seabed and I was surrounded by blue cod. And I even had a nice little school shark swimming by. But for the Trevellis, there was nothing. And with the clock ticking to get back to town to weigh in the fish we have shot, we decided to head back towards the sounds. But it's, the wind picked up and it was fairly choppy heading back down. But there's still a lot of happy faces about the boat. wasn't long before we were back in the sounds and it started the glass off the wind ended up dropping and it was just stunning so we had a quick look at the watch and we said we had enough time for one more dive 
So we jumped in in a new location. It was pretty tidal, which is what we wanted. There's maybe some kingy action going to happen. We weren't too sure. The only thing was the viz wasn't as good, but it's worth a shot. <laughs> there was plenty of bait fish moving about, but unfortunately, the only thing that was chasing it was, I would say, something even more special than a kingfish. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to see them, but Joel and David did as they pretty much swam right in between them. So these are Hector's dolphins. They're one of the smallest in the world and they grow to maybe 1.5 meters, which is pretty small, but it doesn't stop them flying through the water, probably chasing the bait fish that we had just seen. And even cooler, they make some pretty cool sounds underwater. So a very special sight for Joel and David. And with a high like that, it's time to jump back on the boat and get to town ready for the weigh-in. just got back from uh, being out wide uh, we're kind of collecting rubbish now because that's part of the competition as well always bring some rubbish with you that enters you into different competitions as well which is a pretty good way of doing things especially as 300 people uh, entered into this so that's 300 people taking rubbish out of the sea so that's what we're doing now cat's just been out david's been out it's a nice day yeah <laughs> So we ended up doing pretty well, me and Kat both got a Moki at the end. Um, they're not actually on the species list, which we realised this morning, which means the fish are void from yesterday. But we still shot some pretty cool fish, so we're happy. <laughs> Kat very happy, yeah! Eventually we got into the shade and were just about to weigh in our fish. But the people before us had a very impressive cray. This is in the four kilo range an absolute beast of a cray so there's no chance of us winning this comp we still had fun we shot some pretty cool fish as well so i'm very happy it's also pretty impressive to see all the amount of fish coming in and the different sizes and what people have got it kind of is a good sign of how healthy the seas are and what's going on basically the only thing i'm jealous jealous of is eating that cray at the end of the day a big shout out to Hemi and Kirsty for running their coffee shack stand after diving two days with us. They're keeping everybody cooled with their iced coffee. And well done to the people winning the competition. You put in a big effort. Pretty cool to see all the big fish and different fish coming out. And another well done to this chap who ended up winning his own boat after entering into the competition which we all entered into. And good thing maybe he won it because I wasn't sure how I was going to get it to Shetland anyway. But now it's time for some fresh food, definitely some cold beers, and just to let loose. It's been a massive two days. It's time for fun. Even more fun. So I'm going to love you and leave you guys here, um, it's been a crazy couple days, I've had sinus problems again, a bit of a nightmare ongoing, but I still managed to do some amazing diving, shoot amazing fish. I've actually met up with a mate, Quentin, who I dived with four or five years ago in uh, the North Island, doing Kenna. Um, who would have thought meeting here, and now we're just basically chill, beers, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I don't know how I'm going to edit this. I am filming at the end of the episode or whatever. 
Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you all guys soon.